First kick, I snap into action. When I'm digging in the trenches, get dominated off the line of scrimmage. Read and react quick to make an early diagnosis. Hit you with a quick release like Marino Danny Dopeness. Explosive change of direction in the true essence of Reggie Bush. From JT and ZT to DVP and AVG. Terminator to a quarterback, Hunter JP. Steve Ross, the boss, King Flo, and card slinging, gambling genius, slick Chris Greer. Hey, good morning to everyone and all Dolphin fans on this Throwback Thursday. I hope you're all great out there. I'm Rob Mosley, a.k.a. Dolphin Thirsty. And as always, I am joined by Justin, a.k.a. Digging in the Trenches. We're going to have a special guest joining us here in a minute. He's in the backstage, and that's the notorious AT. So before I get everything moved, I'm going to I'm going to introduce your special guest that you bring to our show every week, Justin, so you can introduce him. Oh, right on. You guys you guys know my buddy. This is uh the notorious JP, our buddy Gino, the JP on Sports. If you don't follow him on Twitter, he goes by uh, at the notorious JP. Um, give him a follow, great follow. Always catch him in some spaces, either I'm hosting or one of our buddies. Somebody's in there hosting. Um, give him a follow, man. This is our buddy Gino. He's always with us usually on Wednesdays, you guys. So um, we're here to talk some football with you again today. Um, there's a lot of Dolphins news going on on, on out there. Uh, what's going on, JP? You with us, buddy? Good afternoon. Good morning, uh, whatever part of the country you all in. Hey, thanks for having me as always, fellas. And with an introduction like that, how can you go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And, and don't worry, to be notorious. I saw your treat about Brian Flores being out in Arizona <laughs> before the other guy got all the attention for the very same thing you put out there. So don't worry. Yeah. I, I saw you first. I give you kudos. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. I was just being petty. It happens. I mean, after 22 years in the media, I think the first time that somebody's uh, either swiped my stuff or, you know, reported right. something after me and they get credit and I get none. It's just part of the game. You know, it's just, <laughs> just part of it. One of these days will be will be the source to go to for information. But I'm going to point it out. The person that's getting shared all over Twitter that's gone over what I think it's 10,000 uh, retweets. It's that guy. Look at the timestamps on my page. I reported that sh stuff five hours earlier. Yep. Yeah, no, you did. For once in a while, I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can vouch for you. I saw it. And I, I liked, I think, your thing the other day. And then uh, by hours later, I see this guy blowing up Twitter. So it was crazy. So anyway, Justin, real quick before I forget. So that hoodie you got on, how can someone get that hoodie oh, yeah. if they want that hoodie? Oh, man, it's awesome. These are so fresh. Um, you just contact me through my uh, Twitter DM, DM me a message saying, hey, I'd like to get one of those. Or maybe you want something else. doesn't matter what you want. Just give me a DM message. Say, I want this. Um, I'll give you all the details of the pricing and the info, how you get it shipped to you. I accept PayPal payments or Cash App, so you're covered there. Um, I do... 100% returned, uh, guaranteed. If you don't like it, you know, say there's a mark on it or something, I return it all for free. But just DM me, tell me what you want, color, size, player. I'll take care of everything on this end and then we'll get it right to you. Um, I think we got uh, one giveaway we're still working on, we're ready for it to come out of production. But when we do, Ender, coming right to you, buddy. Gotcha. Uh, sounds, sounds good. And good morning, Hank, the Fish Tank Hank, and Steve. Thank you guys for joining the show. Hell yeah, Hank. Hank and Steve, what's up, guys? So, Justin and JP, I don't know where you stand on the NFL draft, but Justin, I know you're a big NFL draft. So, what do you have in store? Start like linebacker. What's a couple good linebackers you would love to see? Like, as oh, a man. For the Dolphins? Oh, yeah. We'll have some great draft co coverage starting here. So, check us out on uh, Dolphins Daily, uh, dolphinsthirsty.com. He'll be carrying it on there as well with all the excellent coverage he does on the dolphins already with quizzes and uh throwback stuff everything henry what's up buddy here for the free stuff hell yeah everybody would bro free free hat free hat free hat free hat <laughs> <laughs> i get it man um yeah man it's gonna be an awesome draft year if this is a loaded draft um there's plenty of linebackers like you were just asking about in this draft it's loaded um tight ends is loaded running backs is loaded 
Um, for my money, honestly, if I'm the, especially the Miami Dolphins, I'm looking to go um, take a lot of scouting trips and look at this kid from Iowa. This Jack Campbell is one player that's on my list very heavily. Um, great linebacker, man. Very instinctual. Lightning fast Is it, fast round? Is it um, feasible he's there in the second round? I think it's feasible that he might be somewhere in the second round. Maybe, maybe a little too rich because his draft stock is rising. But another kid, too, that is um, real good out of Arkansas is that uh, Drew Sanders. Um, he's a great, great player, too, as well. In fact, he scored higher than Jack Campbell on my SRS scorecards, which SRS stands for Scouting uh, Scout Rate Score. Um, Campbell had a 95, and this is out of a possible 110 points. So there's 11 different categories. You can score 110 points. He scored a 95. Uh, Drew San Drew Sanders, same category, same everything breakdown, all of the same stuff out of 11 categories, scored a 97. So he's two points better than Campbell. Um, both of those are more traditional linebackers. They'll, they'll, they can play inside. Uh, they got versatility, though. They can play a little bit outside as well. But yeah. um, very attracted to both of those. But I got somebody who's even better that scored higher on the scorecard list, but he's not as a traditional linebacker as those two are. And that would be – Ivan Pace Jr. out of Cincinnati. He is legitly, oh my God, man, I can't even get over how good this kid is. He's got a lot of versatility, uh, very fast, very instinctual, and he offers you some pass rush polish that the other two don't really have. Okay. Um, that's what gave him the upper hand right there. He scored, he scored, this is the biggest score I've had score so far this year, 101 points out of a possible 110. So he is the wow. highest rated linebacker I have on the board. So where's he projected to go before we hop in and get back? He's projected actually to go a little bit uh, later in the draft than Campbell and Sanders. Campbell and Sanders are rated very high. Um, I think they're projected anywhere from first round to second round picks. I would say pace probably second or third round. But okay. he could he could get he could get hyped up the way I'm hyping him up and have that draft stock. All right, so, yeah, I'm gonna get with you later on when we have more time <laughs> to put up and get why you have him higher than some of the others. Oh yeah, so I'll go over with you. Notorious, I I always love getting your take on the big media. You see Mike Florio's take. Oh, the Dolphins could go after <sighs> Lamar Jackson. I'm like, oh my god, I think these guys just make up something because they need clicks. I mean, and Lamar Jackson makes no sense to the Miami Dolphins to me whatsoever. Some of the other names maybe, yeah. but Lamar Jackson makes no sense. What Tom do you Brady, think, the notorious JP about Mike Florio. This is another. Oh, I need clicks. Let me throw something out there. Yeah, I think the media nowadays, and this is what bothers me to no end. When I mm -hmm. was a and I'm a random state, I, I, I had some great mentors. Armin Gilliam was one of my mentors in college. I don't know if you guys follow know basketball, but he was the number two overall pick after David Robinson by the Suns. Okay, I, yep. I had a guy who you know was a commentator for the Minnesota North Stars back in the day, and you know these are people that worked in the highest level of media. Okay, I've had people mm -hmm. work for. NBC affiliates in, in New York City, you know, I mean, these people all told me the same thing. And I'm not trying to, you know, pat myself in the back here, but I was I was brought up in this industry on be honest, be, you know, stand by your convictions, be honest. It don't matter if you're last or you're first, just get it right. I look at the media right. nowadays and the media in 2022 or 2023, I guess it is now. I'm so used to saying 2022, but the media in this day and age is not about that. It's throwing about the, it's throwing the hot takes out there. It's throwing blatantly mm -hmm. garbage news out there because yep. you're going to get reactions on social media. I can't stand that. It's blatantly misleading to people. Uh, it's it's continuously, you know, it's continuous just feeding lines of garbage because we would rather have 10,000, you know, social media followers than we would have one honest story. And that's what really ticks me off, you know, and this is right. Lamar Jackson story. I, I, I'm, I'm conflicted on Lamar. I mean, I think I'm going to tell you straight up. If I, if you ask me Lamar versus two a one versus one right now, money's not an issue. I'm picking Lamar, obviously. Right. Because he is the more proven commodity. He, you know, we could say he's staying healthy off the, he, he's the healthier of the two, but he did miss time this year as well. That's contractual issues. That's him sticking it to the Ravens. That being said, you know, that in itself is a problem. You know, I don't want somebody that's going to bail on his team 
when, you know, if he doesn't get his way. But the bottom line, though, is we can want Lamar Jackson. We can ask for all these things. And Florio can report it. Where are we getting this money? Where are we getting the salary cap space to give this guy $50 million a season, which is what he's going to be looking for? Yeah, we can move the chairs on the Titanic a little bit. We can readjust and <laughs> kick the can down the road when it comes to the salary cap. But we're not going to come up with that much cap space to where we're going to be able to even remotely begin to afford what Lamar Jackson's going to want in his contract. Yeah, I know he wants to come to Miami. That's great. So do I. So do I. I want to, I want to come to Miami and be the play-by-play guy for the Dolphins. That doesn't mean yeah. it's going to happen. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. no, so I, I, no, I, just I can't stand this, this recent reporting. And I think Florio, look, what Florio says, take 90% of it with a grain of salt because most of the time it's full of garbage. Yep. Yeah, I, no, agree. I agree. That's why, of course, you can't deny that Lamar Jackson's a great talent. I wasn't going down that route, but it's just that for the Miami Dolphins, it makes no sense because you're guaranteed of giving up at least two first round draft picks. We don't even have a first round back for this year. And then he would say, oh, we give up the 24 and the 25th. And it just makes no sense whatsoever. And then, like you said, the money wise, that would be meaning no more Christian Wilkins. You're gonna, you're not gonna be able to afford to keep Christian Wilkins. You're not gonna, but there's so many other things that, oh yeah, you may make yourself better here, but then you're robbing yourself there. So really, how much better are you? Well, to no, be honest thanks. with you, Rob, I'm not worried about giving up the first round picks. I'm gonna be brutally honest with that. I'm not saying I'm not one of these people that gets the f those picks mindset. I don't believe in that because you do have to build in the trap. Benches, or you do have to have your assets in. I mean, I think there was a comment about Tyreek Hill that his contract basically is a full, you know, his, his one year is a full contract for a rookie wide receiver. But are you gu- guaranteed you get the same production from that rookie wide receiver that you are from Tyreek Hill? And I look at that with the quarterback position. That has been the stick of our, our existence since Dan retired. We've had a couple that have come in and had modicum of success. I think Chad Pennington, I mean, two has been okay, you know, when he's on on there he's been he's been proven more than capable he's proven to be a, a, a good nfl quarterback and as much as we lift our leg on him Tannehill had some glimpses of that too but the the position still continues to be that revolving door so if money was there i would say look you want two first round picks for him fine no problem but the biggest thing i have issue with is what you mentioned after that is i'm not wanting to rob peter to pay paul I mean, right. you know, we could sit there and say that these are expendable commodities. Sure, go ahead and give them Jalen Waddle. Sure, go ahead and give them, you know, Christian Wilkins. Sure, go ahead and give them this, that, and the other thing. But does it, you know, then we're giving ourselves a weakness in a position that, you know, to, to, you know, we're filling one major need, which I, I don't get me wrong, guys. I know people are going to hear this and criticize. The quarterback is the most posi- most important position on the field in 2023. It is. There's not a more valuable position. But at the same time, you can't have a quarterback taking up a large portion of your salary cap and everything else get kicked to the side. That's why you become the Arizona Cardinals. Mm-hmm. Um, and and we're talking durability. Steve did bring up an excellent point. He only played 12 games yeah. in each of the last two seasons. So that's true. You know, we're talking now this year. He was showing his re- He was showing red rear end. You know, can I, can I say ass on here? I just did. <laughs> yeah. He's showing red ass. He's yeah. showing red ass on here. That's all he was doing this year. But at the same time, you can't ignore the history of his injuries and the fact that he's, I mean, his primary skill set is running the football. I mean, it, it's just, there's a lot of, there's a lot of variables it's to, to think about when it comes to getting Lamar Jackson. It's not as simple as one, two, three. No, it's not. Like, just think about if you got Lamar Jackson and you still had two on the team. Like the offense will have to be catered around Lamar Jackson's skill set the same way it is in Baltimore. It's not something you could just plug and play like uh, fans tend to think. Um, I think there's a transition phase with things like that. First of all, we don't have the money to get somebody like that. Second of all, I think you're going to be in the same position you're in now with the quarterback you have now. Look, he's only played 12 games in 2021 and 12 games uh, this season. I mean, honestly, it's like you're getting another hurt quarterback. I think you should probably think about maybe getting a, a veteran backup in here, somebody who's been around the block. Um, they are going to be available. There are going to be some out there. Um, I know we all want to think about like positions we need around the board. Um, the major, most thing that concerns me the most is what about the tight end? I know we all want to draft the tight end, but honestly, we're going to need to bring in a veteran tight end in this case, a blocking veteran tight end like a Max Williams or uh, someone like that, even like the old guy from Green Bay who's been around Mercedes Lewis. You need somebody that's like 
who can block. All we need is a blocking tight end in this. I'll give you a perfect name. Ross Dwelly, he was a former San Francisco 49er tight end, knows the system, mm -hmm. knows Mike McDaniels. I put out a tweet. These, this is like just like that. Ross Dwelly, please, or those other two I just named, the blocking tight ends. I need a blocking. Or that kid from – that Aitken kid, Aitken's kid from Texans. He's a great example, a blocking tight end who can offer you a little bit from the pass catching standpoint. We need something like that to make this offense run a little bit more smoothly. Um, if you, you have to ask me what the needs would be, we already know, dude. Come on, left guard, right tackle, running back, middle linebacker. Almost in that order. Almost in that order. Um, it's crazy, but if something falls on the board to us that we didn't expect to be there, you need to go ahead and grab it. And the reason why is because you might not get a chance to get it again. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Let me get real quick there. Steve and Hank are both giving me a reminder. Make sure you hit that like oh, yeah. and subscribe <laughs> button for me. We're new here and we're trying to grow. So make sure, tell your friends. We're all things Dolphins. We try to be positive, but we also like to be real at times too. So we bring it from both sides. Me, I'm the Homer guy. Justin sometimes grounds me and says, whoa, 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 slow your roll. This isn't as easy as you <laughs> whoa, think. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, we're a good balance here. And as you know, the Notorious definitely is a Dolphin fan, but he's not going to be on the Homer side either. He's going to say Hell it no. <laughs> all real. Like Steve Malloy likes to say, real talk, Finn's talk. So, oh, yeah. You know, that's, that's what it's, we're all about here. So, so I don't know if you good. guys, you guys probably know this already, but the futures deals were already made. They brought back um, the Lester Cotton. Um, uh, Tino Ellis, Jalen Twyman, Braylon Sanders. Um, who else was another one? I forgot the other one. Yeah, I know. We, Steve actually texted me the list. Yeah, I forget. We had yeah, uh, a lot of good names there. Not too bad. Yeah. No, I agree. So, but um, be notorious. Where are you again? I forget. Where Where are you on the map of the United States? Pennsylvania. Oh. Pretty sure. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yep, right outside. I'm like right outside, of, not far from Pittsburgh. I'm actually in the state college area. I don't live far from Penn State University. So, Hell yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. So, are you a Penn State guy or are you just not really? I'm an alumnus. I mean, I graduated in 2006. So, uh, I like you know, that. I got, some I got some affinity for my uh, alma mater for sure. Oh, yeah. Henry, I want to come on and make it confusing. Get on here, dude. Let's go. Yeah, Let's I, see I, what you I got. Dropped it, I dropped the link, Hank. I dropped the link. So, well, I, I do have a couple of quarterbacks that could be in play for Miami's backup when you guys are done. I don't mean to cut off your, uh, you no, know, no, 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 lately sort of kept things close to the hip. Um, mm -hmm. But I have reason to fully believe that two is going to be back next year, but here's a couple of names I've heard as possible backups. And please guys don't, don't get your hopes up and think we're going out and getting, you know, I've heard this, the most ridiculous one I've heard is that Tom Brady is going to come back up to us. That is the stupidest, most uh, idiotic. That would never happen. That, that is as off the wall of a take as you will get. Tom Brady is not coming in here to back up anybody. Yep. Tom Brady is not going anywhere to back up anybody. Back you don't give anyone. a captain a waiter's job and make no, minimum he's wage. No. That's he's, a starter. he's an instant starter wherever he goes. Exactly. Yeah. He's a quick fix. He's a he, he's a short term solution. So if he comes here, then it's either to groom Skylar Thompson uh, for a couple of years and let Skylar learn the NFL, or they're drafting somebody in the second or third round that they have high hopes on, or they're punting the can down the road for a year or two and they're going to draft Arch Manning. I don't know what their process is, but <laughs> right. if, what I'm uh, is if Tom Brady comes whoa. to uh, to Miami, um, <laughs> there is not going to be Tua here. But the names I'm hearing are Taylor Heineke of the of the Commanders. Oh, I love it. Love it. Um, uh, the kid from uh, Gardner Minshew of uh, Philadelphia to back oh. up the Jalen Hurts. Love it. Oh, yeah. I did see and, Minshew, um, too. Yeah. Here's the wild, wild, wild card. And I'm, I'm going to say this has about a 30% chance of happening. But I've heard that the uh, commanders are moving on from all their quarterbacks. And I've heard Carson Wentz could be in play as a viable backup option to Miami. Um, but – 
I'm I'm with all of those quarterbacks, but the one that like really makes me excited out of everyone you just named right there that I would be like, sign me up, sign me up, would be Heineke. If he was like, hey, I'll come in and play backup quarterback because there's a chance I get a play because two is going to get hurt. I, I'd take Heineke all day long or Minshew, but I like Heineke would be my first choice and then down goes down from there to Minshew oh, and come, everyone else. Hank again. I thought Fish Tank Hank. Me. What's up, buddy? I had, yeah. I had a reverb in the background. I had to get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, but welcome to our show. It's all good, man. So, hey, man, I've been wanting to come and see you guys for a while. The problem is for us old people, we need like straight out, here's where to go. Okay, that's it. Now you know where to go, man. You keep saying, I got one guy saying, look on my site, look on my site. And I, I go there and I find all these links, but then I'm like, Man, I which can't one do I press? Where the show's at? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I sent the direct link right there. So, boom, yep, right, right in the on, comment bro. section. <laughs> I appreciate that. I really appreciate that. But what I want to be able to do is be able to go to your page, your YouTube page, or whatever you have all the time, right? Like I do for Finn's Talk Network, right? And be able to find you guys and watch and see what's going on. Yeah, Hell yeah, I bro. was sending you that right there. The home for my, you know, we're new, man. We're just getting going here on YouTube, so it's all fun. You're new. Yeah, but fairly hey, new. Just, you know what? Just, just, Do you ever want to have me over for cake or something? You let me know and bring me on the show. I'll come over anytime. And you know what? I'm not. I'm not all cool like JP, but. Hey, I got five thousand people with me too that might want to come and do something. Yeah, make like that. Hey, oh, yeah. that's all you want. Well, it's hard to be cool like you, JP. So, you know, we're all in that same <laughs> boat. So. Uh, well, you come on. Uh, you're still so, there, JP. Which JP? Are you referring to, Justin or me? Because I ain't that cool, man. I'm <laughs> I'm on there throwing a stink fit that some Tam and Agger shared the same news I did five hours later is getting the credit. And I'm not. So I ain't that cool, man. I'm just a <laughs> schmuck. I'm just no, a no, schmuck and a cool. Jay Brown, man. I'm a Twitter navigator guy. I steal everybody's crap, so don't worry. I'll steal <laughs> and by all means, we just know where it started at. That's all. We just know right. where we just know where it began. You can finish it for me. I'll start it. You can be like you can be the uh, Dennis Eckersley, and I'll be like the, the, the Greg Maddox. That works. Hey, yeah, that, yeah. Not, no, a yeah. not a yeah. problem. Not a problem. Hey. I, I usually am a color guy, so no worries, man. I'll be all over it. <laughs> so anyway, hey, that's perfect. So, Hank, we know you're a keep to a guy, but do you have any backup or you're fine rolling with Skyler as the backup? You know, I, I was listening to you guys talk about uh, Lamar and uh, threw a Tom Brady out there and a few others. And, you know, you guys are right on the mark, in my opinion. I'm, I mean, you have a QB1 and you have a QB2. Right mm -hmm. now, that's who you have. That's who you've got. You know they're coming back. Right. Uh, why go out and spend? As a matter of fact, let's free up some cap space uh -huh. and get rid of Teddy, right? Right. Everybody, right. We, we're all thinking that, I think I believe, right? Mm -hmm. Get rid of Teddy. And, and you know, I, I think Miami's fine. I think that right tackle – and you know if you if you don't get a if you keep Connor in the center, then you don't have to move him over to the left tackle. But right. I I wouldn't the guard, him yeah. at left or I mean left guard. I'm my bad. Right or, or yeah. move him over to left guard. So you know I've talked to people on Twitter and they go back and forth whether they want the center and to move him or whether to keep him. And, and have people fight for the position that are currently on the team at the left guard position. Right. I've even seen somebody say, put right tackle out, hunt out at right tackle. And I'm like, no, yep. no, no, no. I want, I've to heard do, the same. I want somebody that we could guarantee and leave hunt at, at right guard. No, no, right. I agree Where with you because we've got two years of moving guys people, around. Right. So let me let me let me ask. I agree you, with you, Hank, because we've done so many years of moving. Oh, we can move this guy here. I'd rather just have one guy to just play that position, and that's yeah. I don't care if he's versatile or whatever. I just right. want a guy that plays that position well, and you know, find another guy that plays the other position well. In fact, uh, let me ask everybody this question. Um, okay. Say the Dolphins go into the free agency. We cut the cap. We have a little bit of money to spend, and we get a veteran tight end. Uh, maybe a running back, uh, maybe some more depth players. 
And then the draft comes along, and we're on the clock at uh, pick number 51. So now, remember, take in mind, we've already signed a veteran tight end, a running back, and maybe some depth pieces along the line and the defensive line. What would be your choice position-wise to pick at number 51, or would you trade back? What would be your strategy at pick 51? Well, really, then – did you say we cover most of our weak spots, linebacker? Yeah, like all? you've you've got no, not yet, not linebacker. I said oh, uh, then linebacker, end, then probably tight end, running back, and some depth pieces. So linebacker, Rob, uh, Hank, yeah, what would you pick? At fifty one, I'd yep. try to trade back because we need depth. I like that. You know, I like. If I, I like it, I'm throwing yeah. on the GM hat. I'm trading back, trying to get another one around seventy something. I yeah, like that. So yeah, that'd be a that? great strategy. Green Bay or somebody like that. Sure, maybe? sure. Yeah, Try to add some more draft assets and, along and the way. Pick up a hundred and uh, one in a hundred. Hundred, yeah, so something get to, to 50, yep, I like get it. a seventy and a hundred. Yeah, no, that makes, I would try to do. I agree. I like that. That, that makes JP, good JP, sense. what would you do? What would be your strategy, knowing that we got a tight end and uh, maybe a running back and some more depth along the defensive line? What would be your choice uh, at pick fifty one? What position of choice? Well, I, I like I like Hank's train of thought there and trading down, but it's, you know, I, do I too. think that's to, you know accumulate assets because there are a lot of we have very few draft picks this year and we've got a lot of we've got holes that need to be filled. But yes, we do. To answer the question in the sense that, um, what do we do? You know, if we stay pat at you know at fifty fifty one, I'm. So that we, had, we were in a space yesterday, and somebody vehemently disagreed with me on, I'm getting an offensive lineman. I'm getting another uh -huh. offensive lineman because we're, we have Tua coming back next year. That is seems to be the foregone conclusion. We need right. to give this man as much protection as he possibly can get, you know. And I like it. Right now, you know, look, I'm not about moving Connor Williams off center. He, he, showed, very, he showed very, you know, Pro Bowl potential there. And, you know, mm. Hunt, keep Hunt where he's at at right guard. That is his strongest suit. Um, you know, we got Eichenberg, but you know, we can fill in the swing back when free agency or go with Austin Jackson or Ike, you know, Eichenberg and put, hopefully he, uh, or actually Armstead. I mean, I'm, I mean we can Eichenberg or Arm, you know, at Jackson is that swing. We need that sure. solidified right tackle spot. Right and tackle. I know once upon a time, you know, we had three guys, well, we got these guys under contract that are young, that are cheap, that are, you know, that doesn't mean they're starting quality. Mm -hmm. And I, I know that. Previously, and the biggest thing I said before on on other platforms is those guys did not benefit from proper coaching. And now, once it's broke, it's tough to fix. I think it happened here with two very good offensive line coaches that you know, two minds in the offensive line in Frank Smith and Apple Apple. What is Apple? Uh, Apple Matt. bomb. I just brain. Yeah. Yep. Apple bomb. Thank you. I just brain mm -hmm. farted on the last name. Sorry, guys. But you know, oh, you got good. two guys that are working with them. Time. You can develop them. You can develop. Right. A tackle. I think coaching is a lot better now than it was. And I know you go out and sign this free agent, go out and sign that free agent. Where are we getting these resources? Everybody wants to exactly. go out and sign, you know, let's sign Lamar yeah. Jackson and trade for him. Let's go out and, you know, know, let's go out and get George Kittle. I mean, where, where is this money <laughs> coming from, guys? This isn't, not, like, this isn't baseball. This isn't mad. So I say get a, <laughs> get a tackle, get a tackle in right. the draft. I and, like that. You know, have them develop. Yep. There's a, Ahead, hey, Pat. I like Cody Mock out of North right. Dakota, but I like that kid, that guard. Yeah, I know who you're gone. talking about, Cody Mock. Yeah, <laughs> I no, I bet you he'll, gone. I bet you he'll be around. I bet you he'll be around. Hank. Think so? Yeah, uh, I bet that's you. That's who I would try to get if we were really sticking at 51. That's yeah, who I, I like him. I like that kid. Um, I think that's a little yeah. too early for him because I think he'll be around later. But uh, I'll, to jump off of what JP was saying, um, when I when I threw out that question. I left the tackle position open for a reason. I said we signed a tight end, a running back, and some depth pieces along the, the offensive line. So you, oh, yeah. so you could have went, you could have went linebacker, or you could have went to the O line. And he's right. Some people were giving him a little bit of pushback on why we're taking an offensive lineman. I like the pick, whether it was Titman, JP, no, or an offensive lineman. lineman. But the guy I'll throw out there for you, if he's on the board at fifty-one, for me, it's a no-brainer. If he's out there at fifty-one, would be the Ohio State right tackle, Dewan uh, Dewan Jones. If he's out there at pick fifty-one, it's a no-brainer for me. I'm you taking run him. With the card. I run him with my card, and I take that one right yeah. there. He's six foot five, three hundred and sixty pounds, yeah. and moves very well. Is he a day he, one starter for the Dolphins? That's he's a day one. He's a day one starter, bro. As soon as like he, if he grabs a hold of you with those long arms you're locked yeah. up 
that's his whole game, man. He he's susceptible to speed rush outside the edge, but he's really tough. I like the kid a lot. If he was at 51, that would be my pick uh, along the same strategy that JP was saying right there. Let's protect our greatest yeah. asset, which is our quarterback. So you go for the right tackle right there. But here, let me throw this here out at you guys just real quick because I want to hear what your response is to it and your opinion on it is. I know we all want to keep Connor Williams at center. I know this. I really do. But what if, what if, for, you know, just for shits and giggles, there's a chance to improve the offensive line via free agency. I've been pounding this kid's name for three years now, and Garrett Bradbury happened to want to be the on the Miami Dolphins. He plays center. He's a great center. Um, at that case, at that point in time, I think you could upgrade your line, kick Connor Williams back to left guard, put him in between T-Steady, and Garrett Bradbury, and I. Oh man, God, this talking about gets me hyped. And then you have Robert <laughs> Hunt next to you have Robert Hunt next to him, and then you just need to fill the right tackle position. Um, what do you guys think about that? Do you think that'd be something you'd be okay with, or no? Oh, of you course, I mean Connor anything there, that upgrades or? the team. I'm always about upgrading the team, so yeah. Then that's an okay change. If you actually get an actual center to come in and play yes. the center, yeah, that's it. But not. To well, plug in some, some other people guys. were some people were turned off by it because they're like, "No, you're getting a top ten center now, and you don't move him." Um, well, the thing I push back on that would be, "Yeah, we had a top ten center, but we graded out thirty first over thirty second on pass blocking grades through PFF. That's not that good." Um, I think you could get better than what we have right now by having a uh, uh, Garrett Bradbury in, but you know, having him there, having a yeah, center right there makes really sense. You have a, you have John Schmitz out of um, Minnesota. That's my favorite center on the board right there. The, the John, John Michael Schmitz. I love that. I love I'm that. I'm impressed with you, Hank. For an old guy, Hank, you know all these things. I haven't got caught up on the draft yet this year. Yep. Normally I do every year, but it's been hey, a crazy year. So trust me, I have more than going. one screen here in front of me. I'm not that <laughs> yeah. damn smart. I'm getting ready to do. Uh, I'm getting ready to host the spaces at. I think JP. Hopefully, you'll be in there too. I'm getting ready to host the spaces at 10, 10 o'clock a.m. this morning here, and we're going to talk about centers. I'm going oh, over 10 my top. Your time. 10 yeah, 10 a.m. my time. And I'm going to say it's about... like 10:32 <laughs> my time. I got to say you're late. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. I'm, I'm, no, I'm going to talk about centers today. I'm going to go over my top five. Your time. Um, What's we're going to talk time? about them on there. He's out in Colorado. Yeah, I'm in Colorado. Uh, it's only 8:30 here right now in Colorado, so I'm sorry, I still man. got a couple hours. <laughs> it's bad for you out there. All that burning and stuff going on. Oh yeah, dude. Things are happening out here. There's a lot of fires, a lot of crap going on out here. Right I can't now. do that. Yeah. Well, and the notorious he's a, he he's in yep. the in fact it's crazy he's in you Pennsylvania, know, but we're all in Pennsylvania. Talking about yeah, burning, man, like my, yep. So JP, my buddy actually owned some properties. I went and helped him clean out because some oh, squatters burned it to the ground. It was crazy, bro. It's crazy. <laughs> So JP, go ahead, what, man. We could talk ball. What is that? I'm sorry, Justin. What are you going to say? Oh, Justin? go ahead, bro. No, go ahead. Oh, no, I'm just going to bring JP so he doesn't think we forgot him here. Any any thoughts on anything that's being said? No, I feel forgotten here. Believe me, I, I'm enjoying the conversation. <laughs> I, if we can get we can get a vet center, which is not a expense. Who, Benson, yeah, we can get a Bradbury. Um, you know, if we can get a Tyler Biotish uh, of you know Dallas, yeah. who you know t- is yeah. free, I and mean, even Connor McGovern, who looked good with the yep, looked real good this year with the Jets. If we can All get a guy three. like that, I'm not opposed to bumping you know Williams back to guard. We know he can play at a high level there too. That's what's nice about him. He's very versatile. Mm-hmm. Just, uh, Justin, you recall this off season. I was more hyped mm-hmm. about Connor Williams than I was Armstead because he's younger, yep. he's more versatile, he doesn't have the he's injury healthy. concerns, you know. I mean, yep. he's healthy, you know, he's 25. The ceiling is high for him still. It's high. Um, yep. but I, to me, I if agree. you get a veteran center, a center that can start right away, then yeah, that fixes who problems right off the bat, and we can use our draft assets on something else. I'm, I'm all about that. Um, yep, I like so it. To me, that's that's not a bad philosophy. No, nope, not at all. Like as soon as we signed Connor Williams, I'm not gonna lie. Last year when we had our free agent list come out, uh, as soon as we signed Connor Williams, I was like, "Oh hell yeah!" Because I knew for a fact that we got a good one, bro. Because I scouted him coming out of Texas. So, like, I wanted him when he came out of Texas, bro. Like, I've been after him forever. Ender, what's up, buddy? Ender. Glad to see you, dude. Yeah, yeah, man. Yo. It's 
coming, bro. It's coming. Hold patient. <laughs> yeah, you're still getting your thing. Justin's working on it. He was telling oh, hell me yeah. this morning. Oh, hell yeah. I'm a man of my word. Yeah. So Here's another one good. on Twitter, though. People are talking about bringing in. We're talking about the you know, uh, illogical thoughts of some of our fan base. Now they're yep. talking about signing Laramie Tonsil to play guard. Again, guys, where are we getting this cap thing? Where are we getting, money? Yeah, I mean, no, are we know, getting this it. money? It's not, you know, which pocket are we pulling it out of? I mean, it's, come on. Let's crazy. be realistic here. You've got we're to keep your to expectations tapered. Right no. now, we're $6 so. million under the hole. We're $6 million, What is it? It's negative $20 million in the cap hell. Yeah. And that could be done. 16. I understand you let some guys leave. You get some guys go. You restructure some contract. Mm -hmm. You can probably wind up 20 25 over. But yes. 2025 over, where is that going to, you know, that's got to be spread. You've also got to think about, you know, your draft, your some draft of these guys are going to need re signed yeah. in the future. You know, yeah. these guys are on rookie deals, aren't going to be there much longer. So I agree. We got to take it easy on these, these wild expectations. We're going to get George. I mean, if you listen to some of these guys, we're getting George Kittle, Tom Brady to back up to uh, Lamar Jackson to back up to, uh, uh, you know, now we're getting Laramie Townsville to play guard. I mean, I'm surprised people haven't suggested trading a seventh round pick for Patrick Mahomes or yeah. a super damn quarterback position. We could have one for every quarter. I mean, yeah. With what money? We don't have no money. Like the first thing they'll have to do is start at the top of the guy, the top of the salary. Uh, Xavier Howard, um, Armstead, everybody who is our star, you'll have to start at the top and see if they're willing to take a restructure. Um, I was talking about this with Kendall yesterday, and he was saying that. Um, Tyreek would probably do a restructure so we can start there. Um, someone like Ogba would probably take a restructure. So that's two out of the five that I want restructured that we could probably saying get. Chubb already may take a re. I mean, all these new guys we decided. Uh, maybe. I don't know about Chubb I, taking I a restructure. I could see Ogba maybe taking a restructure. Yeah, I think do. Ogba I would probably Tyreke do it. Will. But do you think – I think Tyreek – no, I think Tyreek will. His – his it's the way the contract was written, I think it's set up to be restructured. It's It was it was, it was was written like that for a reason. So, yeah, yeah well, his is the first one, I think, Hank, that would be restructured. Um, mm -hmm. But the one I don't think will be restructured because he won't, won't – doesn't want to take be paid less is going to be Jerome Baker. And he's the one that I think – I think you need to look for a trade partner. I think you need to look for a trade partner right now on Jerome um, – uh, not just because I don't like his game particularly, but because of the numbers as well. If you can get off that contract right there, it would add a little bit of money to us. I know there's some people who are going to push back against me. My buddy Ryan Church, he loves Jerome Baker's game right now. He thinks he's playing really well, which he had a great season. He had a damn good season, played a lot better to my expectations than I would have thought. But at this point in time, I think it'd be better beneficial for both sides to move on. So I think we should try to find a trade partner for Jerome. If there's something else on there that maybe someone's interested in one of our players, maybe we look to make a move. It would help clear some cap space as right. well. So we need to think about this. Is Byron Jones, but from all reports, until June first, he don't even save much money. So he has to be like a post June first. No, what you what you do is see you just give him the designation, and all it is is written on paper. He's, you'll designate right. him post. But they June. said you can't use that money until after June. 1st, no, you so can't. You, That's why you do it though. Like he's as good. He's as good as gone. You're gonna designate him right. a post June oh, designation you guys get cut. Deep man, you guys. Oh yeah. Contracts. Oh yeah, no, yeah, he though. has. To, like, he has <laughs> to be because if you do it before June first, you don't. You, yeah, you won't clear up any space. That's why you designate it post June 1st. And you're right. like, guess what, Byron? See you later. And he's, yeah. gone. he's gone out the door. Now, when you do something like that, you got to remember we're looking to replace. Now we need another cornerback. Remember, Robin Peter to pay Paul. Um, but the thing about it is it's good. Is I don't, uh, I don't know if I'm right about this, but I think Trill Williams is still on the books. He's, I think he's still um, on our numbers for – this season. I don't know if I'm right or not, but I think he is. What's his injury status? Is he expected um, to come back next year? Do you he's know? been he's been dropping some posts saying that he's gonna come back better than ever and that he's feeling good and ready to go. Um, I believe in Trill. I would love to keep Trill on this football team. Um, there's a couple of people who are probably like, no, nah, I'm ready to give up and just move on from Nick Needham and Trill Williams. If either of those two are gonna willing to come back at a cheap discount deal. I'm bringing both of them back. I need we I need, them. need him to come back cheap because he's taken like some decent contracts from us already. So if some team's willing to over, come if he's willing him, to come back for like three million dollars a season, bro, I'm bringing him back. Yeah, mm -hmm. it'd be nice. Yep. But they, I mean, he's he did tweet out that you know 
he's been in discussions with the team, you know, that there's That's still good. on the table. So we are well, they're still on the table. Is that what that means? Like, it's crazy. I love this time of the year because everything is, you know, it's a lot of speculation, no, no, speculation a lot of things of going on it's out there. Um, like I'll get on like something for free agents and they'll have like a fair market value or something like that on Spo track. Like just the other day, just for shits and giggles, I was like, what's Gene Aitkins, the tight end from the Texans, what's his fair cap market value? And I hit it, and it was two point one million dollars. I was like, "Oh my god!" I would sign in for two point one million dollars, like that, like literally, yeah. like like that's a that's a discount, that's a steal. Then you go up the up the number to where Mike Gusecki's at and Dalton Schultz, and you hit their fair market value. It makes you want to puke. Fifteen million annual. Yeah, I was like, no, they're, known, they're known at catching the ball better. And that's I don't care. Right. I wouldn't pay you seven. <laughs> no, I agree. Especially, I think McDaniel is shown in his system. He doesn't. You know, I know the 49ers, yeah. but they have the freak named Kiddo that catches all those balls. But it doesn't seem like McDaniel focuses on the tight end, or is this? Maybe Tua doesn't hit the tight end as much because some of the backups did hit Kaseki more than. Um, I think it's actually got a lot to do with what you have at tight end, um, Rob. Um, yeah. I don't think I don't think Gusecki in his dreams could run like George Kittle does after he catches the football. Oh no, uh, it, no. it just it'll never happen for him. He never um, breaks a tackle. I think if you had somebody like a George Kittle on your football team right now, you would use him like that. And okay. there is a guy out there, but he's a rookie. Um, the closest I could come to it would be the Dalton Kincaid, Kincaid out of Utah. He reminds me of a little bit of George Kittle. But you want to wait a year or two, uh, 2024, Georgia uh, Bowers, that Brock oh, yeah. Bowers kid that's coming out of Georgia. Hey, he's going to be way up there. Yeah. That's my first round pick right there. For hey, I'm too old to wait two years, man. I hear you, bro. I hear hey, you. Been waiting 20 <laughs> years for a playoff win, Hank. What's two more years, you know? So. I hear you. Hey, wait, you know, you never know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, JP, I, I have a lot of faith in Miami coming up in 2023, to be honest with you, because if you went into this playoff game decimated and you came out that that well against supposedly the favorite all year long, I, I really like what Miami's doing. I, I, see I agree. A lot of positive. I, I agree. You know, what I don't know is the whole, are they keeping Greer, not keeping Greer, you know, all, all that speculation stuff. Oh, they're uh, keeping Greer, bro. They're not, Greer's not going anywhere. Yeah, I'm guessing that now, being Ross hasn't fired anybody, that they're formulating a plan. And what do you guys think about the de defensive coordinator? I was though? just going to talk about that. I was just going to ask JP. Good so segue. Let's, let's ask, let's see what JP <laughs> says about the defensive coordinator. So JP, what do you think of Josh Boyer? This week or in general? In, in general, general for like keeping him or getting rid of him. Like, yay, yay or nay? Depends upon – I'm not changed for the sake of change. I think that's yeah. that's foolish. I think that's this that's the stuff that the dysfunctional ham and egger jobber franchises do. You know, I mean, Thank and you. I know there's people that let's change for the sake of change. Yeah, I think four. Boyer earned his chops this week, and I know. Well, we gave up thirty. What thirty? We gave up thirty plus points. It's to Buffalo for God's sakes. I mean, I know. You know come in on. their own house in the playoffs. Yeah. <laughs> and they're exactly a game that we we're supposed to get stink bombed and they 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 balled out, you know. But I mean, I'm just gonna if you can get a Vic Fangio, yeah. If you can get an elite top five defensive coordinator, yeah, make the change. Uh, but j just getting rid of uh of, of getting rid of him just for the sake of getting rid of him because we don't like him because he, you know, he he's not our flavor of the minute. No, that's that's foolish. That's dance. Yeah, no, I'm 100% with you. And that's what so many Dolphin fans want. So I'll like, oh, just fire him with no replacement in mind. You ask him, oh, well, who do you want? To come oh, I don't know. I just don't want Josh Boyer. So See, that's, that's I, dumb. Know. Like, let's fire him with no backup plan in mind. Okay. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to tell you, I, I will say this on record. Like I said, right, I said it a couple seconds ago. If Vic Fangio says he'll come to Miami, yeah, I'm replacing Mike. I'm, I'm, I'm replacing Boyer with Fangio. So I'm sorry. I, yeah, I know I, some people I may not agree with, with me, but. That's your cup of tea, you know. That's that, yeah. That's whatever. No, I agree. But I, this is I here's, agree. here's what I have a problem with some of our fan base about. Okay, we will give so many. We will give some people fifteen miles worth of rope, but we won't give somebody else a string. I mean, you know, we're yep. wanting to get rid of Boyer after his first full year as a defensive coordinator that didn't have Brian Flores attached to the hip. Okay, 
were wanting to get rid of Mike McDaniel after a playoff berth. You know, and guys, I'm sorry, Sean Payton's not coming to Miami as much as we want to believe, okay? He's and Jim Harbaugh just said he's going back to Michigan, and as long as Steven yeah, Ross is during this team, he's not poaching Harbaugh from Michigan so we can put that pipe exactly. away. Exactly. Yeah, like put just, it you to know, bed. We want to give these guys, like, no rope, but we'll give Tua Tungabayaloa 10 years. I mean, let's be, let's be yeah. consistent. Yeah, be logical. Let's be consistent. And by the way, there's another thing I want to bring up to Tua people. This is off the subject here. I saw a tweet yesterday. Where somebody asked, uh, would you rather win a Super Bowl with Tom Brady or never win a Super Bowl and keep Tua Tonga Vailoa? And you would be blown away at how many people voted for not win a Super Bowl but keep Tua. Oh my god. Get out of here with this. Stupid. Place. I don't that give a dumb. damn if it's Pee Wee Herman, Bozo the Clown, the corpse of George Michael. I don't care if they uh, drive <laughs> Bob Greasy's 90 year old ass out there and put him under center. Yeah. I don't care if they put Harry Greasy. Greasy. I don't care who they put at quarterback. I want this team to win a freaking Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Same here, man. Thank I'm you. I'm tired of, I I tired of that. If says they crap. don't want the Dolphins to win a Super Bowl to keep Tua, then we know where you stand. You're yeah. a Tua Tunga Bonello fan. You're not a Miami Dolphins That's fan. That's right. Period. So, All right. Hey, 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 wait a minute, guys. I don't know if it's quite that simple now. <laughs> I'm not I'm not strictly a Tua fan, Tua non, or whatever the hell they're called. <laughs> I'm a balanced guy when it comes to the Miami Dolphins, and I want the Miami Dolphins to win. But Same. I don't open the door and say, Satan, come in. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't just drop my pants and say, all right, we're going to do, do the freaky geeky with it, whoever walks by. And Tom Brady, for me, if he came on the team, I'd support him. But is that what I want? No, not just no, but hell no. no. I don't want to. Well, no one Super wants Bowl, that. You would be playing but, a Super Bowl t-shirt. Yeah, but if you want to win be... a Super Bowl and it gave you a better chance, you'd take it, right? But right. I don't. But, I right. personally don't believe that Tom Brady gives you a better chance over to it, to be honest with you. No. At this and stage that's in his a career. Fair, that's no. a fair response, that's Hank. Fair. And I'm looking, if you ask me, I don't – and I'll say to you the same thing I'll say to everybody else. Do I want Tom Brady here? No. no, and I'll tell you no. why. Because that is a short-term solution to a long-term yep. problem. Brady's going to come in for Bingo. a year or two, and, Bingo. you know, we're right back at square one. We better hope that Ty Skylar Thompson gets that playbook quick and develops, and when he does, he'll be 28 years old when he's a starting quarterback. <laughs> so, we better hope, so we're putting a staple on a gunshot it's wound. True. I'm sorry, we're putting it's a Band-Aid on, on reconstructive knee surgery. So, no, I don't want Tom Brady, and I hope everybody's listening to this understands, is Tom Brady my top choice at quarterback? Absolutely no. not. But if you ask me, if you ask me if my choices are, would I rather win a Super Bowl with Tom Brady or not win a Super Bowl ever and have Tua Tonga by Iowa State a quarterback, I'm sorry. I'm taking Tom If I can root for Thurman Thomas, who destroyed the Dolphins' playoff chances multiple times in the 1990s, and he yeah. yeah. beat on a lot of my parades, I can summon yep. Tom Brady for a year or two. Thank if it means you. us yeah, getting no, Lombardi, would it be like – would it be like me uh, getting split from my wife and dating my mother-in-law? Yeah, that would be strange. It would be awkward. <laughs> it would be but, weird. You know, it still would... but damn, so the sex would be good, would... right? I mean, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> you trying to tell me you wouldn't have a problem with the greatest quarterback of all time coming to the Miami Dolphins and playing and win a Super Bowl? No. I, I, I think I would have to agree. I mean, the guy has proven everything to everybody and doesn't That's right. have to prove prove anything to anybody right. as far as that goes as much as i hate the guy like you said <laughs> you know <laughs> but like i said if you invite the devil in then you got to be prepared for when when all the stories come out when he starts cheating Right. I want to piggyback real quick off of what JP said, like he was saying about the defensive coordinator, how like we all want to – the Ham and Eggers just want to, you know, just cancel guys right away and not give them a chance, not give them a string. Yeah. Like honestly, dude, it's, it's, he's right. He's totally right. This, this dysfunction starts just like that. It's, it's like when you were a kid and you're like, I'm going to quit this job, but you didn't have another job in place before you were going to turn in your, you know, turn in your two week notice. No, you yeah. don't do that. You have something in place before you quit your job. Like, that's why I don't want to get well, the I, coordinator either. It's just retarded. Yeah, <laughs> I could hell? see if, if maybe McDaniel and the only reason I, s I see changing the defensive coordinator is if McDaniel wants someone else. Right. Right. And that would be the only reason to open the discussion up is if he just has a guy that he thinks can do the job with him.
better to some right, degree. That makes sense that he has someone in yeah. mind already that yeah. not just like, oh, I'm going to fire yeah. him and then say go he fishing. He just went along with Miami for the first year and said, okay, I, I'm going to take on the, the D.C. like you want me to. And then after the year, we'll reevaluate. Now, that might be a thing, too. But, you know, you can't really go against Boyer when the 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 secondary was decimated. It was terrible, I mean, bro. There was so many problems. So man. many injuries, dude. And, and you're talking you have special yeah. teamers being a starting cornerback. Yeah, when they don't even Come need on, to be sniffing right. the field, bro. Right. <laughs> you really Imagine what it. his defense would have looked like out there if Byron Jones would have played even half of his games and we could have played our cover one press exactly. defense Brandon, the way we're and supposed Brandon to play. Jones don't get Yeah, and Brandon game. Jones Brought doesn't get hurt. Out of I mean, nowhere and, yeah. and made it work. Play. You made it work. Yeah. Yeah. And they well, made it work the whole thing in, in postseason. They yeah, made it work. In the postseason. That's right. big. Hank, I'm with, okay, your, I'm with your train of thought on that. And here's the whole thing is I think Mike McDaniel is a smart enough guy, despite what the Twitter ham and eggers will tell you otherwise. Mike yep. McDaniel is a smart enough guy. And here's one for you guys, a good enough coach, okay? I don't care what you guys say. Yeah, he has some words he needs to fix on, namely time sure, yeah. and time clock management. Sure. But he is a good enough coach to realize, look, if this is working, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna break I'm not gonna fix what isn't broken. That's now, right. like you said, if he has a chance to bring in uh, you know, uh, one of Steve. his guys, that's the only thing I but I don't think he's gonna do it. Right. Man, that beard game is iconic. That beard game is iconic, <laughs> Steve, yeah. my brother. Thank you that's very much. Iconic beard. <laughs> so how you doing, Steve? I'm doing great, man. I just I had to pop on here, man. I'm getting educated with you guys. I'm totally ignorant when it comes to to the college draft and, and the cap and all this kind of stuff. So you guys are teaching me something. I'm learning here. Who, me? <laughs> I'm teaching you something. Not me. Hey, hey, did We're I mention, educating did you I up, I'm... anything about Hank? <laughs> hey Steve, if, if I'm if I'm giving you an education, I'm sorry about what I'm sorry about the end result. And, and <laughs> I did live in a state that was 48 out of 50 in public <laughs> education, so my, my football knowledge is a little better than that, though. <laughs> I hear you. So, oh, Steve, what are your thoughts before we close out this fine show this morning? Uh, I'm feeling pretty good. I mean, um, like I said, I um, I think the Dolphins have – they do have a lot of holes that we have to fill. Um, yep. You know, and, 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 and I have to say it goes back to Chris Greer. You know, he's put us in this position once again this year. So – I don't know yeah, that's the one guy I admit where my fan comes out. I, I pick on Chris Greer over. I pick over the coach and everything. But like I say, so far, you know, we got to roll. If we're going to roll with them all, we got to roll with him too. So. Steve, but, Steve, let me ask you a question. Sure. Would you would you like to keep washing, rinsing, and repeating and bring in somebody new? Or would you like to figure out what we have in-house right now and make it work? As far as coaching? or As far as everything. As far as the GM, the coach. All of it. The defensive well, coordinator, this, at everybody. This, at this point in time, with with the players that we have on this roster, and I know we have a lot of we got a lot of holes we need to fill. Yes, sir. Um, and we 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 just got a new coach last year. I like mm -hmm. I like Mike McDaniel. He's still you know he's still growing. He made a lot of mistakes, um, but I'll, I'll give him a pass this year. But no, I, I think we keep we keep the foundation that we have in place right now and just build um, and, and add the pieces that we need. Right, I like that. Um, yeah, let totally. me ask you this: What would you what what would you be your first piece that you're trying to bring in during free agency to help the turn the ship in the right direction? And you don't have to name names. Just yeah, just what positions? positions. Right, right. Um, well, you look, got half of it. You said, right, right. That, that <laughs> you did get half of it. You did get half of it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to say probably offensive line. Yep. There Absolutely. you go. That's, that's yep. the first piece we need. We need, we don't, we need some uh, depth across that offensive line. Yes, sir. Uh, look, I'm not real. I'll be honest with you. I'm not real comfortable. We're real comfortable with uh, Liam Eikenberg and Austin Jackson. Yeah, me neither. I'm not comfortable at Me all. neither. Um, so, yeah, we, we need some competition in there across the line to add some depth. Absolutely. That, that would be my first. I that, agree. You know, and, and that's why I like the center 
like when you guys brought up you bring in the center yes because it adds instant depth across instant your... depth across the instant. board bro instant yes. yeah. so and you're getting a day one starter right off the bat you know yeah i like right tackle because covering the blind side but yep. oh you you dangle that fruit there sometimes and you know <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yes, center. Sir. You yeah. might get the best center in the draft pop up. Come pick fifty two, fifty one, whatever. Yeah, you never know. You you might get the hey. best center and sit there and go. No I'll take brain. it. <laughs> Click. Put yep. it there in. are no there are no uh, there are no centers in this draft that have first round grades. I mean, let's be honest. You could probably. I'm going to tell you there is a six six kid out of Wisconsin. That I talked oh, yeah. about, Tidman. 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 This kid Tidman. is a beast, man. He's a beast. He's a we can stud, get him. Dude. Give me him. Give me him. Yep. Give me yeah, him. Yeah, I I agree with JP. I don't think there's any centers really with a first round grade, but that John Michael. Well, that's Smith's, good because we only yeah, have he a could, second. He could fall. Yeah, I know so that fits fits yeah. for us. If that John Michael Schmitz falls to fifty one, I don't care if you sign uh, Garrett Bradbury to a free agency deal or not. I'm taking Schmitz. Honestly, I like I'm not, even, I'm not even gonna lie to you, dude. I've had my eye on that John Michael Schmitz now for three years. He's a legit center with power. He reminds me yep. of the center that the, the Ohio State, the the Green Bay center, the John Myers kid. He reminds me of him. Like, I would take that in an instant for this team. Um, Dude, it would be an improvement. I've seen Schmidt lift people. I live in Penn State yeah. country. I work for the media out here, and I do sports sports talk radio out here. I, and, uh, you know, my boss is big, big in what Penn State. He does the stuff with the football team. Right. I've seen him lift guys and throw them around like they're kids. You know, I mean, this yeah, guy yeah. is a stud. Yeah. He's super yeah. stud, bro. And the kid that uh, JP's talking about is Joe Titman out of Wisconsin. He's a six foot five, three hundred and twenty pound center who actually is a mauler. You guys, literally long arms, throw dudes around. Can, he can play, dude. He can literally play. His feet might be a little bit wonky and a little bit heavy at times. But he he could do it in that position. So if we got our hands on a Joe Titman who is on my all Lindsay team nominee list, he is gonna he he would be great in that position. Plus, you could probably get him in the later rounds, like fifth, sixth, hell, who knows? Um, that'd be a great pickup, uh, JP. I love that Titman kid. Oh, that's cool. But before so I, like I forget, Tittman. make sure you yeah, Make sure same. you hit that like and subscribe yeah. button, guys. Smash that like, like and subscribe, and subscribe. Tell your friends about Dolphins Thirsty on YouTube. And this is Dolphins Daily episode, but Dolphin Thirsty is the channel you got to search for. And That's right. Make sure you hit that subscribe. Justin's going to have some shows coming up all about the draft, really draft intense yep. on our network. And as also, Steve is on the um, Real Talk, Finn's Talk, with yes, Spears sir. on the Finn Sports Network. Hank is on a show, a couple of shows on there on the bandwagon. And uh, I, I don't know the name of your Saturday Finn's noon. Finn's talk today. Finn's, Finn's talk, talk today, today yep. noon on Saturdays, all things Dolphins. Another great network. But Justin's going to be bringing the Dolphins Thursday. A lot of great NFL draft content. I just yeah, we're going to be loaded. Three days, so I haven't got it all updated yet. So I'm going to try to get it updated over the weekend. So next week, we're going to roll out a whole bunch of great NFL draft oh, yeah. coverage. So we'll hey, be loaded, Steve, guys. We'll yeah. be loaded, you guys. You know how I know all these names, Steve? How's that? I, I go into these draft simulators and I see who's who's around our pick. Who's I like available. doing I like doing mock picks of mock drafts I, right then, there. Then I go and, and read about the players that we might pick, and that's I, the only reason I know about these players. So I only need to know about five at a time when I'm talking with JP. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, if hey, you man, need JP, to know, if yeah, I cut you off to tell everyone to see, like so and there's subscribe. A trick to it, all right? <laughs> <laughs> so what were you going to say, JP, before I told everyone to like and subscribe? You were about to say something. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I just I, – I got it in there. Thanks for that, though. I said I'd like Schmidt or Tid, uh, Tidman, you know. I mean, you can't go wrong yeah. with either. So yeah, it's you can't. significant. I can – you know, you got more important business to take care of. So Like I was just saying, too, like uh, Rob was saying, we're going to have draft coverage here. He's not lying to you. We're going to have loaded draft coverage here. We'll be top awesome. to wall. We'll have probably over 250 prospects, all scorecards done, all organic write-ups. If there's somebody you don't, know about and want to know about you ask me and i probably have the write-up done on him already scorecard complete um i don't care if it's from the top of the draft all the way to the back end of it i probably have a write-up on him done already um i don't care if it's a corner i don't care if it's a slot corner out of 
the Sun Belt Conference. I probably know a little <laughs> bit about him, <laughs> but um, yeah. we're going to be bringing that stuff live to you guys, alive and in effect. Um, obviously, it will relate a little bit to the Dolphins, maybe a player that will fall to us somewhere, probably. Um, maybe we'll have some trades. We'll have a top 50 big board. We'll have a top five out of every position. We'll have Diggins hidden picks, and we'll have the all Lindsay team nominees dropped on this as well. Sounds awesome. Well, guys, I want to thank everyone on the panel for joining thank us you. today and everyone that in the room. Thanks for showing up. Bye, you guys. Love, name, love you guys. Time, love you, Hank. AT, love you, Steve. Much love, guys. And love all you, the other JP. guys, I know you're going to drop out and love go you. do your spaces. So where can <laughs> they find your spaces, Justin, that you're going to do? I'll be doing a spaces on the top, on um, Diggins' top five centers at uh, 10 a.m. Um, you can catch it on at Twitter. You'll see it in the spaces pop right up there or right underneath my profile. You'll see it somewhere on there. Come join, talk centers with us, talk some Dolphins football. We'll be on there for like an hour or two, maybe a little longer. All right. Sounds good. So make sure you catch them up. Jay, Justin, I get with you tomorrow. All you other guys. Absolutely. Thank you, Steve. Of course, I'll be talking to you. Hank, yep. I'll be watching your show sure. Saturday. So all is good. Later, guys. And Later. We're going to close out by doing an old throwback Thursday theme here. Hell yeah. Later, guys. Fins Later. up. Fins up. Fins up. Man.